Logistic regression is a powerful and widely used machine learning and statistical technique for analyzing binary outcomes. However, it isn't very intuitive. Personally, I wasted a lot of time trying to interpret the output of logistic regression without first grasping odds, odds ratios and probabilities, the fundamental building blocks of logistic regression. So, in this video, we'll dive into these essentials, aiming to save you some time and some frustration. And this tutorial will be working with the Titanic survival dataset from the CAR data package. To make things easier to follow, we'll keep only 70 surviving females and 20 surviving males out of the 100 in each group. I chose this round numbers to ensure maximum clarity throughout the whole video. We are starting our journey with probabilities for two reasons. First, logistic regression models the probability of our specific outcome. And second, probabilities are the most intuitive concept to grasp. In simpler terms, the probabilities are ratios of something happening to everything what could happen. For example, if 70 out of 100 females survived on Titanic, the probability of females surviving would be 0.7 or 70%. Similarly, the survival probability for males would be 0.2 or 20%. Now, the cool thing about logistic regression is that it can not only give us this exact same probabilities, but also provide 95% confidence interval for those probabilities as a bonus. So we are definitely on the right track with this approach. The probabilities live on a scale from 0 to 1, or 0% to 100%, with 0.5 representing the middle ground. The beauty of probabilities is that they always sum to 100%. This is incredibly helpful because knowing one probability, like the 20% chance of survival, automatically tells us the other, for example, probability of death. In our example, 100% minus 20% chance of survival equals to 80% chance of death. That's why probabilities are everyone's favorite metric for interpreting logistic regression. By the way, this kind of plot can be called a probability curve, but you are most likely familiar with its S-shaped form already. While probabilities are intuitive, one of the key challenges with them is that the relationship between our predictors and the probability of the outcome is not linear. This means we can only get probabilities for groups, like males or females, or for specific points in time like the probability of survival at the age 30 or 60. Unfortunately, the probabilities cannot provide us with a clear linear slope that shows the probability steadily increasing or decreasing with each unit change in the predictor. And that's why logistic regression steps in with a clever trick. It uses the logarithm of odds also known as the logit function, to transform those nonlinear probabilities into a linear relationship. Therefore, it's essential to understand log odds properly. And the best way to understand log odds is to grasp the odds first. The good news is that understanding odds is easy because odds only rely on probability, which we just learned. Check this out. If we divide the probability of something happening by the probability of something not happening, we will naturally get the odds. So, in simpler terms, odds are ratios of a probability of success to the probability of failure. Interestingly, even though odds can be calculated from only probabilities, odds and probabilities are not the same thing. And here is why. While the probabilities are ratios of something happening to everything what could happen, the odds are ratios of something happening to something not happening. For instance, the odds of female survival are the ratio of 70 surviving females to the 30 who didn't survive, resulting in 2.33. This means the chance of a female surviving is 2.33 times higher than not surviving. In contrast, the odds for males are the ratio of 20 survivors 
to 80 who didn't survive, resulting in odds of just 0.25. The key takeaway here is that we can calculate odds from both probabilities and counts, revealing their close connection. Now that we understand both probabilities and odds, let's delve into why we need odds ratios and why logistic regression delivers the logarithm of odds ratios. According to our definition, where odds are ratios of something happening compared to something not happening, if one male survived and one didn't, the odds is equal to 1, which corresponds to a probability of 50%, or as we often say, the odds are 50-50. If one male survived and 4 didn't, the odds of survival are 0.25, exactly what we just calculated with our model. As more men die than survive, the odds drop below 1 and approach 0. But no matter how small this ratio gets, odds never become negative. Dividing 1 by anything, even infinity, will never get you a number lower than 0. On the flip side, when more females survive than die, the odds of survival shoot right up above 1. And the fewer women die compared to those who survive, the higher the odds get. Theoretically, these odds could reach incredibly high numbers, like 5, 100, 10,000, or even infinity. To visualize the oddness of odds, let's plot them on a graph. Here is what we see. Odds can range from 0 to infinity, with 1 sitting right in the middle. The middle point acts like a divider, splitting all possible odds into two segments. A small segment from 0 to 1 represents a higher probability of failure than success, and a literally infinite segment from 1 to infinity represents a higher probability of success than failure. Unlike probabilities, which follow a symmetric and nonlinear pattern, odds exhibit both nonlinearity and pronounced asymmetry. This asymmetry can make them challenging to interpret. You might wonder why do odds even exist if they are so skewed? Well, odds find their sweet spot in specific scenarios, such as finance, gambling, or even sports betting. That will take bets. But the real power of odds lies in their ability to construct odds ratios. These ratios precisely quantify how much more likely one outcome is compared to another. That's why odds ratios often accompany probabilities and logistic regression results. So we need to talk about odds ratios. Odds ratios demonstrate how the odds of an outcome change with a one unit increase in the predictor variable. Odds ratios can be interpreted in terms of times or percentages. In our specific case, the odds of female survival on the Titanic are 9.33 times greater than the odds of male survival. To express this increase as a percentage, we calculate it as follows. 9.33 minus 1 times 100% equals to 833%. Therefore, the odds of a woman surviving the Titanic are 833% higher compared to the odds of a man surviving. To verify this, we can simply get the odds of male survival from the counts and then multiply it by 9.33 to find the odds of female survival. Likewise, we can flip the odds ratio and divide the odds of males by the odds of females. This odds ratio of 0.1 tells us that the odds of males surviving are only 0.1 times the odds of female surviving. Additionally, you can utilize the infer equals true argument within the immense function to obtain 95% confidence intervals. And this approach allows you to be 95% confident that the true odds ratio lies between 00.56 and 0.21. To verify our result again, we multiply the odds of females by the male odds ratio of 0.1, resulting in approximately 0.25, which represents the odds of male survival. 
Converting the odds ratio into percentage, we get 0.1 minus 1 times 100%, which equals to minus 89%. This translates to 98% lower odds of survival for males compared to females. The fact that the percentage increase can go way higher than 100%, but cannot go below 100%, again highlights the nonlinear nature of odds. And while we can increase the odds of an event to infinity, we can't reduce the odds of an event by more than 100%. That would mean the event is entirely prevented. The odds ratio higher than 1 makes even more sense when you think about the growing stock price. Imagine a company like Nvidia experiencing a massive 900% increase in value. That's what we call 10 bega. Conversely, the odds ratio below 1 applies to declining stock prices. A stock can only lose a maximum of 100% of its value. So the odds of it going down are limited compared to the potential for significant growth. I found the stock analogy particularly helpful in understanding odds ratios and percentages. And if you found this video useful so far, consider liking it and joining the channel. Last but not least, it's important to distinguish between odds and odds ratios. Because odds are ratios themselves, but they are not the same as odds ratios. Odds ratios are just the ratios of different odds. If it seems confusing right now, don't worry. I also needed some time to fully understand it. Take a moment to reflect on this example and soon things will become clearer. So, while odds ratios are definitely more interpretable than odds, they still have the same limitation, asymmetry. This problem, however, can be easily solved by taking the logarithm of the odds ratios, which improves the interpretability of logistic regression in three major ways. First, by taking the logarithm of the odds ratios, we make them symmetrical around zero. This means that log odds ratios can range from negative infinity to positive infinity with zero at the midpoint. Secondly, centering around zero allows us to interpret the sign of log odds ratios. Particularly, negative log odds ratios indicate a higher chance of failure than success while positive log odds ratios indicate greater chances of success than failure. Finally, log odds ratios have a linear relationship with predictors, which significantly simplifies model interpretation, because it makes logistic regression a special case of the usual linear regression. Taking the natural logarithm of odds, which is also known as a logit function, serves as the foundation of logistic regression. The beauty of the logit function is its simplicity, because it only has one parameter, p, which represents probability. Specifically, the logit function computes the logarithm of the probability of something happening through the probability of it not happening. This ratio in probabilities defines the odds. Since odds alone may not be as informative as the ratios between two odds, we ultimately arrive at log odds ratios. In summary, logistic regression transforms probabilities into log odds ratios. These ratios are linear, symmetric, and possess an interpretable sign. Consequently, we can measure how a one unit change in any predictor impacts the likelihood of our binary outcome. That is why you see log odds ratios in the output of the summary function, because log odds ratios offer the most interpretable results. Specifically, the negative log odds ratio for males indicates that male passengers have a significantly lower chance of survival compared to females. However, the magnitude of this difference isn't immediately apparent from the minus 2.23 log odds ratio alone. And here is the catch. While log odds ratios are great for understanding direction, positive means increasing odds, negative means decreasing odds, they are not as intuitive when it comes to quantifying the exact difference. The good news? We can easily transform log odds ratios back into odds or probabilities. 
These are more familiar concepts and easier to understand. That's why scientific papers report logistic regression results in two ways – odds ratios in tables and probabilities in plots. And you might be wondering why I waited until now to use this summary function. Well, there are two important reasons for it. First, starting to explain logistic regression with log odds ratios wouldn't be as intuitive as starting with probabilities and then processing to odds, odds ratios, and finally log odds ratios. This step-by-step -step approach builds a stronger foundation for understanding the concepts. And if you think there is a better way, please let me know in the comment section below. I'll be very interested to know your thoughts. And secondly, summary function has nine limitations which you absolutely need to be aware of to avoid misinterpretations in your analysis. So to know what those limitations are and how to address them, check out this video.